a ton of chicks. I am chick crazy right now. <sighs> Not hearing anything. Worst case scenario is there's a break in the line and I'm washing out my berm and flooding everything, so. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California. This channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. I wanna quickly share a new project of mine that I'm working on. A few weeks ago, I was inspired to give away all my extra eggs at the time to families in need in my community. Ever since then, I've really had this like fire lit up inside me trying to figure out how I can make this a regular occurrence. Well, the roadblock I'm running into right now is I have maxed out on my space. So after doing a little brainstorming, I realized there's a pretty big space near the vineyard where I could put a couple chicken coops and probably keep 100 to 150 chickens where they would still be free range and totally living a happy and healthy life. So I recently started a GoFundMe page. I have the link below in the description. If you guys can check it out and read about this new project I'm working on, if you can help at all, or even just share my GoFundMe page with others, it would mean the world to me. And I just want to be able to donate eggs to people who need them while providing something healthy and nutritious to my community. And I hope you guys can help me help them. Thanks for listening. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Okay, I've got Hopefully a pretty busy day ahead of me. You never know how a day is going to go, right? But I've got a long to-do list and I'm hoping I can get it done. This morning, I'm going to give you guys a little chicken update, some things I've got going on around the house and the chickens, and then later we'll be heading to the farm. So I recently picked up a few laying hens. <laughs> And I had them in a separate pen for a few days and they just got integrated into the flock. So I want to make sure they're not getting beat up too much because a lot of times when you add new chickens in, they will get pecked out a little bit, but they should have plenty of room to get away. And there's four of them. So it's not like I just threw one little girl in there by herself and she's got a fend for herself. They've got a little tribe. I've also got a ton of chicks. I am chick crazy right now. I think I have about 24 chicks right now. I've got 11 with the broody mama, if you guys remember that. And they're actually getting pretty big. Let's check them out. So I got these babies as day olds from Tractor Supply. And as you can see, they're growing, mama's in there, but everyone is doing really well over here. And then I've slowly just kept picking up more from different sources. And my dad actually used to raise a lot of different birds when we lived at our old ranch. We had a pond and he used to raise quail, pheasants, geese, and a lot of times just let them go. So he had these really nice brooders. So I'm gonna show you guys those brooders in a minute, but we're gonna start by feeding all the ladies, checking their water, and just make sure nobody's getting beat up too much. I ran out of all my fun mix stuff. So right now we pretty much just have feed and oyster shells. Good morning, Roscoe. Good morning, sweet boy. I'm really excited to see how the chicks turn out since Roscoe is so handsome. I've got nine bantam eggs under a broody. So last time, last year, when I attempted my very first eggs, I gave the mom six and I only had one hatch. That was one of my um, normal hens. So we'll see how it goes this year with the broody. 
I have got to figure out a way to like rejuvenate their run. I've been researching a lot about possibly raising meat birds, which I really want to do it because I'd love to be able to raise my own meat, know how that chicken lived its life. I forget who said it, but it's like, you only want that chicken to have one bad day and that's the day you process it, right? I think it would be great to be able to raise a chicken for myself and my family, but I just don't know when it comes to actually killing it, if I can do it. I do think I've, I've had some sick layers in the past that have probably suffered longer than they needed to because I couldn't kill them. So it's not always about killing them, you know, because you want to eat them or whatever, but like sometimes I need to put them out of their misery. And so a friend of mine, a couple friends of mine who process meat birds for themselves, I'm going to learn from them and we will see how that goes. That's going to be a few weeks away though. And I'm not sure if I'll make a video on it or not. So let's see, everything looks good in here. All right, let's go check on Bo, who I got a new kind of crate set up for him as his little like hospital and check on the chicks that are in the brooder. So here is the brooder I got from my dad. You can see how there's two levels. And like I said, he's actually got five levels and normally the bottom level's actually on wheels. So it's up off the ground. I've got some three or gosh, they're probably older than that. I've got a couple bigger chicks in here. I'm only putting them here at night and then I move them outside during the day. But this is a heater and I love it compared to the heat lamp. You can buy these flat ones similar to this for your little homemade brooders, but I mean, this is, this is really nice and it's almost like, you know, being under the mother hen. So they just go under there and there's a wire or there's like a chain that I can shift it up and down depending on how big they are. They will only be in here probably three weeks and then they'll start going outside during the day. But see, I've got these little food trays and these are adjustable on how much space they've got. They've got their water over here and it's the same thing. So I don't have to worry about them drowning and they're all chirping. So to me, that means they're happy. So that's my little brooder set up right now. I absolutely love it. it. Like I said, it was something my dad had really happy with it. And then someone the other day asked if I wanted these old rabbit cages. So I took these rabbit cages and I set up a really nice spot for Bo. He has been like in a large cat crate or a small dog crate in our laundry room every night. And he could stand, but it was tight. So this is really nice because he's obviously got a lot more air. He can move around. So I'm gonna go ahead and get him his vitamins for the day and get him moved outside because I know he likes to be around his ladies. All right, just got to the farm. The very first thing I wanna to try to do this morning is turn my irrigation on. I have not irrigated since last fall, summer. So I'm gonna to try to get everything turned on and do a little test run. It is supposed to be like 60 degrees today and in a couple days it's supposed to be 87. So we're gonna have a really big spike and now that the vines are growing, they need some water. Could be something as simple as a loose wire nut. A loose wire nut. Well, is that what those ones right behind the screen could have been? Or those all looked fine, you thought? Well, all I saw was power. I mean, uh, oh, power was? All right, well, big shocker. The morning did not go as planned. It is 2.20 now. I had to help my dad with some stuff and I also had a little electrical problem. I was going through all my notes, couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. Well, I had my electrician come, which I showed you guys a little bit clip of. He's the one that installed all this stuff in the beginning. And it turns out there was just a little wire that worked its way loose um, and we got that all fixed. So now I'm about to go test my irrigation system for the first time. But really quickly, I wanted to show you guys where the chickens will go if I'm able to get uh, this money together to hopefully grow my chicken flock. So there's my vineyard right there. And this is where I wanna put the chickens. 
We have these two rows of tall poplar trees and this nice big open space in between. So I'd wanna clean up this area, get a couple chicken houses, and we'll probably fence it in and rotate them a little bit. We'll get grass growing in here. And this is kind of, you know, it's a blank slate right now, but it's kind of where I'm envisioning the future of Beaver Vineyard's happy hens. So there's that. All right. So the first thing I have to do before I start irrigating is I need to go over the levee into our pump house and grease and oil the river pump because it has not ran in a while. So there is our water source, the Sacramento River. Okay. Anyways, here is my river pump. This holds the oil, so I'm going to take the top off that, fill it with oil, and then there's just a couple grease fittings I'm going to hit, and we'll be good to go. Because this is the very first irrigation of the year, I'm actually going to flush some of the water out of the pipe. We've got this big cement box here that the water can go into, and it'll go back out into a ditch. This way, all that dirt that was sitting in the pipe and coming right out of the river right now doesn't go straight into my drip line. So the pump is on. Got it coming over. So there's these two valves. As long as I have that one open, it'll come here. And all I gotta do is go off. So once I shut that off, the water actually will start shooting back into the river, which is good too, because if it sucks anything up, it shoots it off the end of the pipe. So I'm just gonna do this two or three times, and then I will close this valve right here, and then it'll make all the water go that way, and that goes underground over to my irrigation pump over there, through my filters, and into the drip lines. I do apologize, it's a bit windy today. I actually just ordered a mic for my GoPro. I, I don't use anything like that, but I figured I'm in YouTube for the long haul now, so I better get a mic. So uh, hopefully that'll come in pretty soon. But okay, so I finished doing that over there. So we're gonna come over to my filter station. I have a little control panel here. I actually have super exciting thing coming. It's not completed yet but I'll let you guys know. I'm getting a little irrigation upgrade, um, but we're coming to my control panel and I'm going to turn it on just manually. And if it goes right, what we should see is the river pump turn on and then there's a little delay. It fills with water and then we'll hear my irrigation pump turn on here. So hopefully this goes right. Not hearing anything. Heard the river pump go on. I can hear the water running through these. So this should turn on next. There is a lag. Because normally the river, you know, the pipe would be empty on the levee. It would need to get the water over. There we go. It's on. So these are all filters. Because I have a drip line, the water's gotta be really clean. So the water runs through all these filters before they go out to my field. So the next thing I'm gonna start doing is opening these and let the water shoot out because it'll clean the lines. It takes a lot of time, but it's worth it because your, your lines are less likely to be clogged. While we're here, can we just take a quick look at my vineyard because it's looking amazing right now. It's like it's exploded. Look at the little baby grapes. I mean, I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but they were just like these little tiny guys here that I was pointing out. 
like that big and now look at them so awesome I'm not sure you guys are gonna be able to hear it between the wind and my pump but you start hearing this whistling sound and that means the lines are filling up with water um, it's blowing all the air out of the drip line and the water's coming. There we have it. That's what I like to see. Means these babies are gonna get some water. I bet it'll come out brown. Yeah. Nice. What a beauty, right? All right, so I'm gonna start cleaning out the lines. I just do as many as I can. I go down and open a whole bunch and then I walk back and start closing them. Something I started doing over the weekend was numbering my end posts. So I went and numbered every five. And that way, like, let's say I was here and no water was coming out, I would know that there's an issue down the line. And I can say, okay, row 31's got a problem. I could put it in my phone and come back to it later. I've been wanting to number my rows for a while now because it seriously makes life so much easier. I can just put notes on my phone and I know exactly which rows to go back to. It's always nice to have ribbon on hand in case it's in the middle. I can tie up exactly which one it is, but I got that done over the weekend, so I'm happy about that. Okay, I just finished flushing this block here. I am gonna try to finish about 25 acres today and then I'll finish the other 25 acres tomorrow. The reason I'm doing that is because I need to get on my duster pretty much. I've gotta get the duster going. I'm actually going to start dusting tomorrow night and it's hooked up to my tractor and everything, but I haven't even like turned it on. So I just need to get it turned on. That way I'm not in a super panic tomorrow. And if I can't get it turned on, I'll be able to call my mentor right away and be like, please come help me but he is gonna come tomorrow and just help me get started my very first round because I've never dusted before. And once I start dusting, I will dust once every seven days for 10 weeks, like clockwork, no missing. Yeah, so that's gonna be super fun. Okay, here's a great example. I just opened that, not one drop of water which means there is a problem down there. So I'm gonna ha hop in my little Kubota down there, drive this row and see if I can find the problem. I just thought I would say a quick note cause I don't think I said this earlier. I do not do this every single time I irrigate. I just do it at the beginning of the year to flush the lines because I have not irrigated for months. So it's just a one time thing get everything flushed. I should be good to irrigate the rest of the year. And then next year when I start irrigating, I'll do it again. Okay, here is best case scenario. For some reason, you know, we have crews come out here that prune and do a lot of work. Every once in a while, these just get bumped. There we go. This is the underground valve. You know, I have a main line here and that comes up to every row. So by this being switched off, it stopped the water. That's, like I said, best case scenario. Worst case scenario is there's a break in the line and I'm washing out my berm and flooding everything. So that's what I like to see. Let there be water. Woo! 
Anyone else get excited about irrigation? <laughs> what are you doing? Wondering what mom is doing? Rain has this collar on that keeps her um, in kind of a certain area and she can't go in the vineyard, unfortunately. Keeps you off the road though, huh? And that's what's important. Come on, let's go. I need a water and a fresh GoPro battery. Okay, I finished flushing all the lines for today. Now I'm gonna go see if I can hop in my tractor and at least see if I can get the duster rolling and then that way I'll be ready for tomorrow. Here's the duster I'm gonna use. What a beauty, right? But hey, someone's letting me use it and trusting me with it and I didn't have to buy one. So seriously, I'm super grateful. All right, let's go out and test it out. Okay, I just got out to the field. I am not dusting right now, but I am gonna start dusting tomorrow night. So there's just like some leftover stuff in there, but I just wanna get it turned on and make sure I even know what I'm doing before tomorrow. So I have hydraulic hoses that run a mixer on the inside and then the PTO runs these fans that blow the dust out. And I realized this whole time I have just been calling it dust. It is sulfur dust. It's organic and it helps prevent mildew and mold from growing on the grapes. Totally organic and safe, but you know, if you get mildew and mold, you lose your crop. So that's why it's like, you've got to stay on top of it and do it every single week, no matter what. Okay, let's see how this goes. So that's weird. My hydraulic doesn't stay on. So I'm gonna have to figure something out there. Okay, I'm gonna turn on the PTO. Woo. Wow. Okay, well, you couldn't really see anything because I don't have any dust in there. Like I said, there's just some leftover stuff, but it's, it's spinning and it looks like it's working. I'm gonna have to find out about the hydraulics, which has the mixer inside, but I'm feeling good. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Remember to hit that thumbs up button. It means so much to me. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for my first day of dusting.